by those that they say it is. After all, how many of your freedoms have been legislated away by Osama bin Laden or the Taliban or Al-Qaeda or Saddam Hussein? The answer is none. Your freedoms have been legislated away by the very people who take oaths to defend your freedoms. Republicans and Democrats alike. Your Congress, your Senate, your President. There is a war on freedom. And now, thanks to the Homeland Security Bill, the Patriot Act, the Terrorist Bill, the Model States Emergency Health Powers Act, we have thumb scanners and retina scans and face recognition, metal detectors. At the airports, we have body scans and body cavity searches. Yes, there is a war on freedom. And let's not forget what George Bush had said in regard to conspiracy theories. Let us never tolerate outrageous conspiracy theories concerning the attacks of September the 11th. Malicious lies that attempt to shift the blame away from the terrorists themselves, away from the guilty. Every nation in every region now has a decision to make. Either you are with us or you are with the terrorists. A much calmer situation and a much better evacuation. And and these and these people. And now I ask all of America and the people of the world, where's your line in the sand? As we know, there are known knowns. There are things we know we know. We also know there are known unknowns. That is to say, we know there are some things we do not know. But there are also unknown unknowns, the ones we don't know we don't know. And if one looks throughout the history of our country and other free countries, it is the latter category that tend to be the difficult ones. Ladies and gentlemen, the presentation that you've just seen was timed out for 52 minutes in the hopes that someday it would be broadcast on a commercial television station and thereby leave enough room for them to insert their commercials. We're going to take a look at some of the information now that we decided not to put into that presentation. But before we do, let's take another look at the belly of this plane before it hit the South Tower. After examining the bottom of the plane, we came to the determination that it was highly unlikely that the plane could have taken off from a commercial airport at all. Therefore, it had to have either been a private or a military aircraft, and we ruled out private. So now, considering that it might be a military aircraft, let's take another look at the clips that we showed you and the testimony that was given by not one but two eyewitnesses to the plane hitting the tower. Mark Bernback, a Fox employee, is on the phone with us. Uh, Mark uh, witnessed this from what we understand. Mark, were you close enough to be able to see any markings on, on the airplane? Uh, hi, gentlemen. How are you doing? Yeah, there was, um, there was definitely a blue logo. It was like a circular logo on the front of the plane, uh, towards the, uh, yeah, definitely towards the front. Um, it definitely did not look like a commercial plane. I didn't see any windows on the sides. And as far as I knew, when I saw it coming down, I was like, well, LaGuardia is pretty far away, and that plane is really slow. 
and uh, definitely very low. And um, I'm completely panicked. I'm <laughs> you're freaking out. I can't well, believe what I just saw. We are all shaken by this. We are uh, watching the video now back live. Uh, but the upper floors of the World Trade Center in Manhattan in flames now after apparently two large airplanes, we're talking about jet, jet liners here, slammed into the sides right around 9 o'clock this morning. Mark, if what you say is true, those could be cargo planes or something like that. You said you didn't see any windows in the side? I didn't see any windows in the sides. I saw the plane flying low. I was probably like a block away from the subway in Brooklyn, and that plane came down very low. And again, there was, it, it was not a normal flight that I've ever seen at an airport. It was a plane that had a blue uh, logo on the front, and it just it did not look like it belonged in this area, to be All frankly right. about it. I mean, that's not an accident, Keep in my it. personal opinion. Again, we heard the woman screaming not once but twice that this was not an American Airlines. This was not an American Airlines. And we also heard the Fox employee giving his testimony not once but twice that the plane that he saw had no windows. So now we have to ask the question, is there something in the arsenal of the United States military that is a 767 type aircraft that would have no windows? What you're looking at is a photograph of a Boeing 767 that was manufactured for the United States Air Force to serve as a fuel tanker. You'll note that it has no windows. But now we have to take another hard look at some of the clips we showed you earlier and ask the question, is there anything else in these photographs that might indicate that it could be an Air Force 767 fuel tanker? In this clip, you'll notice as the plane enters the building, and we'll stop frame right here, take a very close look at the tail of the plane. You'll note that there is a very small anomaly right in the tail section on the bottom. What could this be? Let's take another look at the clip that we analyzed in depth earlier where we saw the attachment on the bottom of the plane. But this time, look at the tail section. What is this anomaly? Could this possibly be a boom port for a 767 Air Force tanker? Now let there be no mistake that we are not presenting this information as definitive proof that some sort of a government controlled 767 tanker slammed into the towers. But the information does require that we at least ask the question. And speaking of that, how would a governmental agency get a pilot to pilot one of these air tankers into one of the towers? Maybe they didn't even need a pilot. <laughs> This is an AFRTS News Minute. The latest in the U.S. military's arsenal of tactical unmanned aerial vehicles was on display at the Pentagon this week. The Shadow 200 TUAV is essentially an oversized, remote-controlled airplane. And now we come to the $10,000 question. How is it possible that in the sleepy town of Versailles, Missouri, in a little production studio, we can do an in-depth analysis in a slow-motion expose of video footage that's been at the fingertips of every major news network all this time. How is it possible that they can show you slow motion video of car crashes and basketball games and they can do frame by frame analysis of major events in history like the JFK assassination and yet they haven't seen fit to show you one slow motion picture of these planes hitting the towers. Why is it that shortly after September 11th it was decided that it would be too painful for America to see these videos anymore, and so they decided to stop showing them. Maybe now we know why they stopped showing these videos. And maybe we should have nothing but contempt for the mainstream networks for withholding this information. After all, if you become aware of a lie, and you do nothing to expose the lie, you then become part of the lie. Has this ever happened before in American history? Have the mainstream media networks ever suppressed information in regard to terrorist attacks in this country? Get it in. It appears to be the Oklahoma County Bomb Squad. Uh, it's their bomb disposal unit, essentially, is what it is. And it is what they would use to, if, if the report that we gave you just a few moments ago turns out to be correct, that they have found a second explosive device of some kind inside this building. They'll back that trailer down there, and the uh, bomb squad folks will go in 
and they will use that, uh, that trailer. You see the, the bucket on the back there, sort of, this is how they would transport the explosive device away from this populated area to try to do something now, with it.